Hi, so I want to talk you through how to do the Identify Elements of Poetry lesson on IXL. Uh, first of all, this is what comes up on IXL uh, to explain poetry. I just want to talk you through it because uh, sometimes poetry is easier to understand when heard than read. Um, so basically it says, uh, starting at the top here, it says poetry is a special kind of writing, it has many elements that make it different from ordinary writing. Knowing these elements can help you talk about poetry, understand it better, and enjoy it more. Um, and I really just want to point out that we're actually pretty familiar with poems. Um, we listen to music all the time, and lyrics to songs are poetry. So, um... In addition to, you know, maybe you listen to or read um, just spoken word poetry, but you're probably actually more familiar with poetry than you think. And I'm going to try to make some of those connections for you today. So it says, for example, a poem rhymes when it has an end pattern of words that end with the same sound, or that it has a pattern of words that end with the same sound. And there are two types of rhyme. There's an end rhyme and an internal rhyme. So an end rhyme is when the rhymes appear at the end of a poem's line. And it gives this little example from Mother Goose that says, Little Betty Blue lost her holiday shoe. Um, and I want to just show you another example. This is from a song that you might know um, from Empire State of Mind. It says, In New York, concrete jungles where dreams are made of, there's nothing you can't do. Now you're in New York. These streets will make you feel brand new. The lights will inspire you. Let's hear it for New York. So uh, the those are end rhymes. All of the do, new, you, and you're going to hear that, and you're going to hear a lot of that in a lot of songs. Um, so that's a really form, a really common type of rhyme. Internal rhyme happens in the middle of a of a line. Um, so it's at least one rhyming word it appears inside the poem's lines. So this example from William Blank is Sweet Dreams of Pleasant Streams. Um, an example from a more modern song might be from Kane West's Follow God. It says, but nobody... Okay, I'm going to skip down a little bit. It says, uh, searching for a deity, now you want to set it free. Now you want to see if we, let's just see if three a piece. Um, so right there, see if we, let's see if three a piece is a lot of internal rhyming. So rhythm is a pattern of strong and weak syllables or stress in a poem. You can recognize rhythm in a poem by listening to how it sounds. A poem with regular rhythm have beat like in music. Um, so here's an example. This is uh, called iambic pentameter when it's just every other syllable has stress. Uh, it says he watches from his mountain walls and like a thunderbolt he falls. So you kind of hear that there's stress on all of the syllables that are in bold. Um, and it explains it further. It says the syllables in bold are strong. We say them with more force than other syllables. In this poem, every weak syllable is followed by a strong syllable. So the line sounds like the dum the dum the dum the dum da dum da dum da dum da dum <laughs> That sounds like kind of a regular uh, rhythm for a poem. Here's an example um, from One Direction. The story of my life, I take her home, I drive all night to keep her warm. The story of my life, I give her hope, I spend her love until she's broke. Um, I do want to point out that in a lot of kind of classic poems, the kind that you read, there's going to be a lot more of this, and that in music, and especially in more modern music, um, there's going to be a lot less of this kind of like very straightforward da dum da dum da dum rhythm. Um, and even this um, this song doesn't exactly have that rhythm. I kind of changed it a little bit to make it fit into the rhythm. Um, if you know the song, you know that it goes, the story of my life, I take her home, I drive all night to keep her warm and time. It's frozen. The story of my life, I give her hope. I spend her love until she's broke inside the story of my life. So it kind of has an unusual rhythm. 
Um, and a lot of songs have that, especially rap. A lot of rap has very complex rhythm and scripture. So uh, if you're somebody who reads a lot of holy texts, whether that be um, the Bible or maybe if you're reading the Quran or other holy texts, uh, a lot of times the rhythm um, is a lot more complex. Um, and partially that's due to the cultural context it's coming from and partially it's due from those texts having been translated, at least in, um, in the case of the Bible. Um, let's see, I'm actually going back here. Okay, so free verse is when a poem has neither a regular rhythm or rhyme pattern. So here's an example from the old bridge. It says, the old bridge has a wrinkled face. He bends his back for us to go over. So it's poetry, but it doesn't have kind of like that rhyme rhythm feel um, like this example from the eagle had. Repetition is when words, phrases, or whole lines are repeated. So their example is the dainty flying squirrel in vest of shining white, in silver, in coat of silver gray, and vest of shining white. So they're literally repeating lines. Um, since a lot of scripture is poetry, I took an example from scripture. Uh, that might be something that you're familiar with. Here's from Psalm 136. I won't read all of this, but this is just an example. It says, Give thanks to the Lord for his good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. So that's an example of repetition in poetry. Alliteration is when beginning consonant sounds are repeated in words that are close together. So consonant sounds are any vowel are any sound that's not a vowel sound. So one example is where the wild men watched and waited, wolves in the forest and bears in the bush. So the where wild watched waited. It's all the same sound one after another, and that's alliteration. Um, this last one, onomatopoeia, that's how you pronounce this word here, onomatopoeia, is when language sounds like what it talks about. Um, so, for example, if I say whoosh, uh, whoosh is not really a word, but if I say whoosh, you might have this kind of image or idea of maybe a gust of wind or a basketball flying through the air. Um, and then when the basketball goes through the net, you might think swish. Uh, and that's an example, another example of onomatopoeia. Uh, the one, the example they give you, it goes tlot, 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 tlot. Had they heard it, the horse hooves ringing clear. So sometimes onomatopoeia um, also uses real words. It says hark, the humming, honeybee is humming. So humming is onomatopoeia because it almost sounds like humming. Um, the actual word humming sounds like humming. Um, so let's do a couple of examples. It says choose the poem that uses repetition. So remember repetition is when there's repeated lines or phrases. Um, this first one, the poor old year died hard for all earth lay cold and bare beneath the wintry sky while gray clouds scurried madly to the west and hid the chill young moon from mortal sight did not see any repetition there how about this one down 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 to the depths of the sea she sits at her wheel in the humming town singing most joyfully down 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 that's repetition choose a poem that has regular rhythm or pattern of a sound like a beat so this one says, it was also dull except for a few gray legs under shiny black umbrellas running along the gray shiny sidewalks. That one, it's, there's like lines that are different lengths. It doesn't seem to have a regular rhythm. Let's read this one. Within a green and shady bed, a modest violet grew. Its stalk was bent, it hung its head as if to hide from view. Hear how there's kind of a rhythm within a green and shady bed, a modest violet grew. Its stock was bent, it's hung its head as if to hide from view. You could almost like clap along with it. So that's going to be a regular rhythm. Choose a poem that uses end rhyme. This is pretty easy. I just need to look at the end words. 
uh, look rhymes with shook spoken rhymes with broken that's definitely end rhyme right there this one I just to check I see here snapped right purple impressed those end words do not write rhyme with one another so it's the first example another one choose the poem that has regular rhythm I'm actually gonna skip that since we already did one um, choose the poem that uses internal rhyme so let's find if there's an internal rhyme. And the monsters vast of ages past, they beheld in their ocean caves, they saw their ride in their power and pride and sink in their deep sea graves. Now let's read this one. The days went by like shadows, the minutes wheeled like stars. She took pity fr from my heart and made it to the smiles. So actually I don't see any rhyming in this second one. In this first one, there's definitely internal rhyming. It says the monsters vast of ages past. So vast and past rhyme with one another. And then again, in the third line, they saw them ride in their, in their power and pride. Ride and pride rhyme. Awesome. So for alliteration, that's when the words have the same starting sounds. Um, so let's see if there are lines that contain a lot of one sound at the start of several words. The little toy dog is covered with dust, but sturdy and staunch he stands. And the little toy soldier is red with rust and his musket molds in his hands. I already know this is the answer because just reading it, I noticed sturdy, staunch, and stands. I also noticed there was red, rust, and musket molds. There's a lot of sounds that repeated. All right, choose a poem that is free verse. So free verse is going to not have rhyme and not have a regular rhythm. So once there was a little boy with curly hair and pleasant eye, a boy who always told the truth and never, never told a lie. That reads like a regular poem, like a regular rhythm, and we also have the rhyme between I and lie. So I'm thinking that's probably not the answer. Let's read this one. She knows. She knows well enough to come for food, yet she sees me not. Her bright eye sees, but not me, not anything. Yeah, that one doesn't have that kind of regular uh, rhythm and I don't see any rhymes. So that's going to be free verse. All right, and now onomatopoeia. So we're looking for words that sound like their meaning. Um, let's read this first one. A tune was born in my head last week out of the thump thump and shriek shriek of the train as it came by it up from Manchester. And when next week I take it back again, my head will sing to the engine's clack again. I'm thinking this is probably the answer, um, just because instead of telling us about sounds, they almost seem to be recreating the sounds. As I read it, I say thump thump and shriek shriek. So thump sounds like a thump and shriek kind of makes you go eek, like an actual shriek. Um, so I'm thinking this is probably it. Um, I'll read this one just in case. It says, without either sign or sound of their shock, the waves float over the Inchepi rock. So little they rose, so little they fell, they did not move the Inchepi bell. Uh, don't think that has onomatopoeia. Also, quick note, I have no idea what Inchepi means or how to say it, but I can still make an informed decision about this question. Um, always just be aware that just because there's a word that you don't know, um, especially when it's a proper noun, uh, like the name of a place, just it's okay if you don't know how to pronounce it and it's okay if you've never heard of it, um, you still might be equipped to answer the question. All right, and I think that that brings us full circle. I think we've done all of the types of questions. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this activity and just look for poetry in your everyday life. There's actually a lot more around you than you think. 
um, and you know more about poetry and are more familiar with poetry than maybe you thought you were.